and you are live. Hello everyone, Facebook Live. Ask Wolfie anything on Thursday. Um, my knowledge is uh, limited, so I invited a guest, a very famous cyclist and a very knowledgeable cyclist. And I'm very happy uh, to have Adam Hansen today with me. So have, welcome again, Adam. Um, we had a fantastic talk with him, Wolfie's Talks, uh, a couple of months back. And now Adam is retired and Adam has all kind of interesting projects going on, building a triathlon bike, building his own shoes. And um, I have to say, it was one of the most interesting talks I had because it was really tech, uh, tech oriented and I'm, I'm, I'm myself, I'm interested in it. And uh, Adam has some fantastic ideas and we, we informed everyone. So we got a long list of, of questions from, from the listeners. So thank you so much for sending them in. Uh, but first of all, welcome to uh, Wolfie's Ask Wolfie Anything Thursday. So it's really cool to have you around. And you, you live now here in the UE, and um, yeah, yeah, it's hi. great to have you. Yeah, uh, actually, um, I'm spending a lot more time here, and um, I'm yeah, based in uh, Russell. Very cool, very cool. So we're going to see you soon on a Friday morning? <laughs> maybe. 5.30. Maybe. maybe in yeah, these 5.30s uh, are a bit hard for me. It's hard, isn't it, for Russell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Because we started the roadsters rides again, so tomorrow morning we start at the Falcon Center. We have the information on our website. We start at 5.30, but let's go because there's lots of questions. Um, crank length. <laughs> Obviously, this has changed so much in the last years, and uh, I remember the days Jan Ulrich, uh, 180 cranks, and then it went down to shorter cranks, and now you're riding still 180? Oh, I've jumped back up to 185. 185, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm more of a 165 guy. Yeah. Yes, you're taller, but I yeah. feel there's a little bit. What is your thing with the 185 train? Um, well, there's a guy called Dan Martin who did a lot of research yes. on it and he did a lot of tests. And his conclusion was whatever the crank you are using is probably the best one for you. Yes. There's very little difference. Um, based on the Limo data that we've seen, um, crank length does change your leg angle range. Yes. So, this is a, a good factor if you want to, you know, increase your leg angle range, and that, that just means you drive from your top movement to your yes. bottom movement. Um, you will be able to produce like like any long leverage. You can put the same amount of weight and yes. create more force. Yes. So climbing, um, it is easier with longer pace. Yes. That's for sure. Yes. Um, on the flat, um, I when I raced with 180s and one season I did race pro with 185s also. Then um, they don't like that too much. <laughs> um, yeah, you do struggle with the corners. You know? yeah. I noticed there are some corners descent I couldn't pedal through. Um, a lot of bike fitters will throw riders on shorter cranks because it does change the, mo the mobility um, movement in your hip joint. Yes. So some riders that are a bit tight, they don't have good mobility, you can fix this, and I call this a band-aid fix because yes. there are other things you can do to improve it, um, to open up the hip angle. Um, so they'll, a lot of guys are sending people to shorter cranks for yes. that reason. But um, I believe there's, well, there are other ways to adjust your bike fit to accommodate, you know, longer cranks. Yes. And actually, just recently, last week, I, I messaged about 20 pro riders asking yes. their, their leg length, yes. their femur, and their, Correlation. Yep, everything, and the crank length. Yes. And I've got all this data, and I want to put it together, because what I never understood is, how can a guy like Marcel Seaberg, yes. He's very tall. Retired? Yep. Um, Soon to retire. Soon to retire. Yes. He uses 177.5 crank. And with crank length to ratio, yes. there's no way that ratio yes. is, that is longer yes. than Cal Ewan, who yes. is super short. Yes. On 170 crank. Yes. This is just, you know. Um, and I just and I haven't looked at the data yet. I've got it all okay. I want to put it together. Just so, just to, you know, just because uh, I, I think it's just wrong to say short is better. Yes. Uh, I think that's just wrong. Okay. Okay, very good. I felt that I was sitting a little bit more comfortable in an aero position because my knee was not coming so high That's to my body. Yeah. So I think um, I had the pleasure of you speaking about Dan Martin, the, the professor from Australia, uh, who, is a, who is a scientific um, teacher and so on. I had the pleasure to meet him in, at, a, at a conference in Germany from SmartFit and from Jubilmeis. They had a conference there, so I, I met him and I, I listened to his lecture. Uh, which was quite quite interesting, and he said what he said. I think from one fifty to one two twenty, he said almost no difference in uh, in, in pedaling. So yeah, try it out. What you feel is a good crank length for you? I, I agree as well. For climbing, obviously your upper body position is is different. So you have obviously more leverage force, and if you maybe more aerodynamic or on a time trial bike, or you have limited mobility, maybe a bit of a shorter crank might be might be a fix. Uh, but yeah, let, let's yeah maybe to try it out and get some get some tests. Um, we had a question if people are changing depending on the GC stage. Did you, do you know the teams in the teams? Did people change if they were climbing or 
or racing racing a flat race, would they change the setup position or not really? People stick to their setup. What I've noticed over, especially the last probably 10 years in my pro career, a lot of riders are shifting more forwards yes. on the saddle. Um, there used to be measurements of guys 17 centimeters from the nose to the bottom yes. bracket, and now it's really like, um, I know Greg Henderson, also Andre Greifel, um, a lot of my teammates are around six to seven centimeters, okay. so they're getting really close to the bottom bracket yes. now. Um, this, this, you know, this does open up the hip angle. Um, and I think um, it is a balance of what you're actually doing. Um, like for me, when I was a rider, I was more of a worker. So yeah. a lot of the times I was on the front or riding the side in the wind. Um, and it was just better for me just to be more like a time trial position, yes. if you know what I mean. Yes. So I made my position more time trial, to yes. be as zero as possible, forward as possible, open up hip angle so my seat was very far forward. Yes. And that's where I had to do the majority of my work and the hardest point of me. So. It was it a good position for, um, uh, let's say, sprinting? No, but I, I, I never okay. needed, uh, yeah, I needed okay. had to do that. So, um, but in general, I do believe that it does, um, when, you, when you're more over the bottom bracket, you use less of your calf muscle, you do use more of your glutes and your quads, yeah. uh, sorry, more of your quads, and it just, it's, I think it's more of an efficient mm -hmm. position. Yes. And for GC, um, like I, when this person asked, they heard that Enos was doing it. Yes. It makes sense because during the uh, Grand Tour, the more efficient you are, the greater the maximum energy. output can be. Mm -hmm. well, if you're spending too much energy early on, then when the last climb comes, yeah, yeah. Yes. And you have a, a shorter, uh, sorry, narrow handlebar and a longer stem, is it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So your bike set up. Yeah. So what what is the handlebar with? 38 centimeters. 38 middle to middle. Yeah. 38. Okay. Yeah. And the stem? Uh, 140. Oh, okay, that's a proper that's a proper pro setup. So one forty <laughs> stem uh, and thirty eight middle to middle handlebar. Very good. How long did it take you to find the best position? Are you still searching for it? <laughs> um, I do a lot of tests with the Lemo system, yes. and we're finding out um, a lot of a lot of useful data. We have this protocol now, which is really interesting. Where yes. Uh, we test your rise mobility and yes. we test the, the torque. So we, we do a mobility test with high cadence and a uh, ramp test with high power, and then. Um, we have a little break and then they do a um, hold the same cadence and the power goes up. So yes. The falls up. yes. And what we're finding is that, um, and this makes sense because, and I'll get back get to mountain bikers in, in, a, se in a second, that when you when you have higher torque in your pedaling stroke, your leg angle range changes. Yes. And this is because when the riders are pulling up, they're yes. locking their ankle. Yes. And and they're, they're pulling up with their ankle. And think, yes, exactly. And because that's happening, it's yes. not like when you when yes. you spin high, yes. where your ankles up. and when your ankle join is up, your yes. knee is higher. Okay. So what we're actually seeing now, um, you can actually alter your position because the thing is, a lot of bike fits are you know thirty second capture, yes. you know, in a very yes. easy state. Yes. But when you're riding and racing, for load for yeah, a while. Exactly. So we're seeing these changes quite a lot, um, and this is a protocol that Limo does yes. um, to to identify things. We're also seeing that. Um, with the mobility part, if a rider changes his pelvic angle at the super high cadence, yes. what he's trying to do is he cannot do that that high cadence because he just doesn't have the mobility in his position. So what he's doing is leaning backwards, yes. so he's able to produce that. Uh -huh. And so for something like that, we'd actually recommend them to um, adjust the seat or maybe move yes. the uh, seat a bit forwards, open the pelvic angle up because in normal riding they can do that position, yes. but when the intensity comes, they can't. Yes. So okay. yeah, so. Um, you know, I, I'm developing a lot of these um, tests for the for Lima on that, and we're seeing that. Um, yeah, uh, it's, yeah. You always say, "I wish I knew that when I was younger." Yes, yes. Is this it? Is it? Very good. <laughs> See, just to explain maybe to everyone. Uh, Liomo, super interesting product, and we're using it in, uh, since since a couple of years when it was launched. We, we bought immediately the sensors. So there's five sensors which measure the angle and measure as well a rotation, uh, acceleration. Yeah, so it's got a zero and accelerometer okay. sensor. Good. So you can see when, for example, when you when you put this on your you put them on your on your quads, you can put them on top of here, you put them on your on your on your exactly. back, yeah. and you put them on your feet, so you would see the angle of your foot when you're riding. And and you, you could do this while you're really riding. Yeah? And most of the bike fits are done for a few seconds, as we just said. But when you're really out there and you really capture the data and you ride it one or two or three hours in and you're on the last stretch in the last 15, 20 kilometers, you do something completely different than you would do in a bike fitting. So this is really as far as I'm aware, really the only tool where we can measure real, real time, real life data and, and analyze this later. What are you really doing when it, when it really counts? And that's super interesting. And you're, you're a long time with them yeah. and you develop this all and all, there, there's so much more uh, we have to do. We make a special session for Leomo uh, when he's coming next time.
Um, do your machiavella, do you reconnect with all of bike fitting? Uh, how can I find a neutral pelvis position? What do you think is a good pelvis position? But that comes with your flexibility. And so we're using jubeo mice as well here. Um, we used it for a long time now, I think eight or nine years. Was this well something when I saw it? That was really, I, I don't want to say the answer to all my prayers, but I never really understood what the saddle and the, 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 the pelvis and the saddle, how this connects. Yeah. And when I saw jubeo mice, I said, wow. This is so cool. I can see now what is happening. We do it for the feet. Yeah. We do the pedaling analysis. Uh, so this is really fantastic. We, we understand now so much better what the rider does, what the rider does under load. So have you used the Jibia ones? I've actually been trained to use it. So oh, fantastic. Yeah, so fantastic. I'm a, a trained bike fitter with the Geobarmas. Um, the, so that's, pretty, if you don't know, Geobarmas is a pressure mapping system that goes in the saddle and it monitors how the pelvic moves. And I'm a big fan of it because I use Lima. Yes. And how Geobarmas works, is it sees where the pressure is, so how the hips are rotating on the seat. And Limo does the exact same with the sensor. So obviously when the pressure is on one side, we, we feel the accelerometer and the gyroscope. So we can see all movements. And the idea with the gibomise of the pressure system is you want it as stable as possible as the hips. Yes. That's right. And, and Limo's bike fit is, the, the protocol we have is exactly the same okay. as, as gibomise, is where saddle down, Slowly shift it up until there's too much pelvic movement, and yes. it's too much pelvic movement, and yes, sort of find anyway. that position. You go forwards and back. So, um, yeah, the best way to find the best pelvic position is just to if you're using the geobiomise, make sure that um, black line I don't know the proper name of what it's called, but there's a line that follows your tracking regression, regression, right? regression line, or center of friends of pressure. Yep. And then, yeah. And when that's as minimal as possible, that's the most stable position. Yes. And Nemo uses pelvic rotation and pelvic yes. rotation. So it's, 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 it's the exact same. We always saw when we did this measurement like a, a perfect yes. eight. Yeah. It was really yeah. the, the pelvis was doing yeah. a, a perfect eight. And sometimes you could see somebody was shifting in one direction, but you could see some riders really created that perfect eight symbol on it. So yeah. Yeah, super, super interesting. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward. We need to work on this. I think we okay. need to really geek out, lock the door, and work for a couple of hours. Uh, do you ride with friends or uh, with the team? What do you prefer, riding with a group or riding with <laughs> with this stuff? Um, uh, I do most of my training alone. Okay. Um, I'm pretty strict with um, with what I do. Um, so when I do like proper training, um, yeah, I always do it alone. Um, and then when I have my like rest days or um, let's say jump miles, yeah, it's with yes. friends. It's always nice to ride. Okay, good. Yeah, that's for sure. To get a bit social. Yeah. Favorite thing to do in Dubai? That's uh, on this. Visit what is? Come on. <laughs> that should be the first thing. We have to cut this here. Okay. Actually, Fair actually, the first, uh, last time I was here is the first thing I did. Oh, very good. Okay. <laughs> Favorite thing to do in Dubai? Um, wow, there's so many things. <laughs> visit what is? Again, okay. okay. Favorite thing to do in Dubai? Uh, hey, visit you, of course. Oh, <laughs> very good. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. That was a very spontaneous answer. I liked it a lot. Very good. Uh, one advice you would give to new cyclists? Um, uh, just enjoy. Just, just use cycling. Like I use cycling. Um, for example, two weeks ago I rode. I wanted a long ride. Yes. And what I did is um, I was in Europe, so I rode from near Ostrava to Bratislava and back. And I, I kept it over two days, and I slept there. But the, the point was, is it was it was a super hard long yes. ride. It was like eight hours. But I went through different villages Good. and I looked around and. You can use training to see different things, yes, good. and it's not just you know go to the same track and just train there. You know, go and visit a different one. You know, and eat at a different proper place, and you know, try different things. And you can really do cycling as a lifestyle. Yes. And this is, I think, this makes it so more interesting and so more exciting. Very good, good advice. Go out and enjoy the ride. It's not only about the power meter. It's not only about the speed. It's really about the feeling you get, and maybe sometimes really. Uh, go inside yourself when you're riding and, and really feel what's happening in your body and see really our body is such a wonderful tool and, and all these endorphins and everything just try to feel them going into your bloodstream and feeling uh, the passion and look around the, the desert is beautiful the mountains in Ras Al-Khaimah so I think that's that's great advice yeah because there's so much you can see and if you can do the trip on a bike you can incorporate it yes much better so much, yes, two, two flies with one it's not a secret that you love fast cars <laughs> Have you ever thought about taking part in a race, maybe even on 24 hours on Nürburgring, in a car or on a bike? We don't know. Yeah. Um, Would you do it on a bike or on a car? 24 hours. I'd, lo I'd love to do a 24-hour bike race. That's okay. for sure. Um, uh, to race cars, I've been to like the Bruno Circuit, um, 
uh, once or twice. Uh, I went to Newburgh Ring once. Um, I think racing be very different. My, my experience in Newburgh was pretty um, pretty scary. Like, yes. Because you, you, it's, it's, it's a public road actually. Yes. And you pay. You have to ride to race there. Yes. Well, to, to drive. There. To drive. <laughs> yes. How about yeah. the racing? Yes. yes. To racing. And um, I did three laps and I turned three corners and there was a car upside yes. down on the road. So it would be very, very dangerous. And, and I had no idea. Honestly, I was there riding. It's an I think sixteen or eighteen millimeter round, and it's it's really oh, quite yeah. steep with eighteen oh, percent yeah. gradient. And it, I didn't know there was a Formula One track before because I envision Formula One tracks really uh, flat. But this thing is a beast, yeah. you know. Yeah. I mean? And then you have that that long descent, and then this bottom. <laughs> and I can imagine if you go with 250, 300 kilometers now, you go in that ditch. This must uh, everything falls out of your. That's a scary thing in Newburgh, right? Yes. So like, it, the, there must be like. Five or ten meters yes. from the road to the wall. Yes. Where Bruno racetrack, it's for motorbikes. Open. Yeah, you go up and you got no trouble. If you want to experience racetrack, obviously Formula One circuit in Abu Dhabi. We have the Wolfies container there in Yas, so join there. It's a good experience, but Nürburgring is a different. It's a different level. Um, okay, now you're tri lead. Cyclist, <laughs> tri lead. What advice would you give to someone wanting to get into tri lead? Get a good bike. Oh yeah, get a book, good bike from Wolfie. Yes, very good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. Um, yeah, I think it depends what background you come from. So if you come from a cycling background, um, you have to take the running very easy um, and build up the, the running muscles. Um, it's a totally different movement. Um, the impact of the muscles is something that can be super difficult for a cyclist because um, cycling is a totally different motion. Um, and yeah, learn to. Yeah, cool before you walk, that's for sure. So, you know, I've been doing a lot of that with the uh, running. Um, swimming, I have a bit of a good advantage because I came from a swimming background years ago, so I'm, I'm really loving the swimming. But um, what, what I noticed was is if you're doing a race and you have a strong discipline, don't save yourself in the discipline. Because what, what I learned from myself is, and I spoke to Cameron Worth about this yes. also, if, if, if I was to do 180 kilometers maximum, yes. Yes. I'd get up and you'd be almost fine. Yeah. Because I, I've done that so many times. Nice. That. Where if I get off and I do it at 80% to save for the run, yes. I'm going to get off the same feeling. Yes. Okay. And I Good. won't get that 20% okay. extra, 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 run. extra running performance. Yeah. So really, you know, utilize your strength, don't save them. If Adam says he'd done this a lot of times, 21 times in a row, you did a grand tour? 20 grand tour. Okay. No, but just, just, I have to say this slowly that everybody can follow. That means seven years in a row, you did the Giro d'Italia, the Tour de France, and the Vuelta. That's each of them is about three and a half thousand kilometer, and you did it twenty one times, back to back to back to back. What record? Never anyone was as consistent. So, yeah. So if he says he can ride one hundred eighty kilometer fairly flat out, um, we can we can trust that. Um, Okay, what is your opinion, rim brake and disc brake setup? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> um, disc are better. That's just fun for sure. Um, they feel better. They they last longer. Well, I think they last longer. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just better. It's it's just um, if I was to say something bad about disc brakes, um, they're heavier. Mm -hmm. But apart from that. Um, Not much you can, yeah. I think there's more design options later on. I think at the moment we're buying, we're building rim brake, rim brake bikes with disc brakes on it, but I think there would be more options later in development. I think in a few years we're going to see some yeah, some uh, some things which we can we can build different things now with the with the rim brake. I think we can open open the the tire size, the forks got open more. I think there was a lot of improvement coming with it, which was kind of cool. How was your time trial bike coming along? Um, I had to put on hold a little because I because okay. we had all lockdowns in the shed, okay. so the pools were closed. Okay. And then you couldn't swim in the lakes because it was yes. frozen. So yes. I made a um, endless pool. Yes. And this project was a massive job. So I made okay. I made this uh, four meter by one point four by nineteen centimeters with a jet throwing the water, and I put it cool. in my garage. And um, so I was working on that, and that finished about uh, like three or four weeks ago. Yes. And then now I'm back on the bike project. On the bike. And so I'm okay. Actually. When, because we had a deal last time he was in the shop, he said, Wilson, we're going to be the first shop selling this bike. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. And how long we have to wait? How long have the uh, which, uh, listeners and uh, viewers to wait? It's a good question because I, yeah. I, I'm going to uh, make my own drivetrain. Yes. Um, and 
um, it was kind of good that I made this this pool because yes. it made me think of it more, and I thought of a, a better method of a drivetrain. Okay. Um, wow. Which includes a, a, a sprocket that expands. Okay. And and, and, okay. and um, shrinks. Um, so I, I 3D printed it in plastic, and this works. Very good. Um, I just got to work out how to do it. Um, so um, I won't get into this. It, it's, yes. it's very complicated. Very but if I can do this, then the whole bike is super narrow. Because okay. you only have one sprocket on the Like back. a balsa. You did support some very nice. Also, uh, like bikes. that. The thing is, like, yeah, yeah. Balsas. Do they exist still? No, I haven't, I haven't seen it for a while. But I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the coolest thing you could have. Yeah. <laughs> they made shorter bottom brackets, yeah, shorter yeah. cranks, and everything. It was Lance super cool. Yes, yes, yes. Very good, very good. Okay, listen guys, this was so cool. Uh, we're conscious of your time. Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to geek out one day again when he comes hopefully next time and we have some more news about the bike. And um, yeah, super cool. Thank you very much. And I think I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. We wish you a good weekend. Tomorrow morning, 5.30, if you want to join us. Falcon parking space opposite side DX bike. 85 kilometer ride. 35, 38, 40 is the speed, depending what the group is, is willing to do and if everybody had a good a good night's sleep um, but yeah looking forward to see you enjoy the summer uh, don't push too hard and drink enough water yeah have a good weekend everyone thank you thanks for coming thank you adam thanks. thank you